tea and a biscuit. Um, so, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jack. I'm Tom. Double act already. <laughs> um, oh, I don't see the notes on this. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, so this presentation is part of a project at Tate um, supported by the Lumen Foundation um, and the aim is to develop a high-level preservation strategy for VR artworks, which is how we came up with our catchy title. So the aim of this ongoing project is to move from exploratory research um, towards a strategy for acquisition and preservation of VR. Um, and this presentation aims to summarize our progress so far, which has been an examination of the core components of VR, art, uh, VR systems, the production and playback of 360 video VR works, um, the production and playback of real-time 3D VR works, um, and it was increasingly apparent to us that there was a lot of this to understand before we could start on the exploration of preservation strategies for the above. Um, so there are a range of experiences that people refer to as VR, and we are focusing on 360 video and real-time 3D. Um, and we are talking about those uh, slightly separately as they uh, present quite different um, characteristics. 360 video relies on pre-rendered frames, whereas real-time 3D is dynamically generated. This has repercussions for the level of interactivity. With 360 video, we are tied to the point in space from where the video was taken, whereas real-time 3D can be truly interactive. And this, was, uh, this is reflected on this spectrum. On this, you could also uh, plot uh, passive flat video way over to the left and AR, which we have happily ignored so far, um, somewhere over to the right. Um, because of the significantly different production processes and characteristics of 360 video and real-time 3D, we've split them into two sections for the process uh, for this presentation. Um, so just a quick uh, hardware system overview. Um, we've got to sort of rush through some concepts, so forgive us. Uh, this is a tricky diagram to explain, but basically what I want to show is that the user forms an important part of the system. So the headset that the user is wearing is um, not only receiving images, but is feeding back information into the computer, determining what, what part of the image that we see, uh, what audio we hear, etc. There's also positional tracking, uh, which uses the relationship between the headset and external sensors to generate a position within the physical space that the user is occupying.